Hello, hello, hello. My story, very normal people. Today in our show we have, now he has a lot of hats. So his name is Edward Willett and he will tell us himself. Welcome, <laughs> uh, Edward, for the first time in our show. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so, Edward, uh, can you introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. I am a very normal person. <laughs> I live in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, where it is still very much winter. Uh, and uh, I am a writer and editor and publisher. I um, started my career as a newspaper reporter uh, when I was quite young. That was in my 20s. I was a newspaper reporter and editor. Did some work for the Saskatchewan Science Center as a communications officer. And then for the last almost 30 years now, I have been a freelance writer. Uh, and uh, over that time, I've written more than 60 books of uh, various sorts, science fiction, fantasy, and nonfiction for readers of all ages, won awards, and I recently started my own publishing company to publish my stuff and other people's books. So, uh, oh, and I'm, a, I'm also a, a professional actor and singer, so <laughs> there's that too. <laughs> so you have the full package, right? Yeah, yeah I, 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 well... I, I'm either, I'm either a jack of all trades, trades. A jack of all trades, trades and master of none might actually be the only expression that would apply. I don't know. Hopefully, I'm master of a few of them. But I think from if you start with one, the second one is easier, and the third is easier, easier. So it's it's especially when they are, <laughs> let's say, uh, they have a connection with one another. It's easier to go from one to the other one, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so and these are all things that I've been interested in since I was a kid. I mean, I, when I was deciding what I was going to study in university, it was kind of a toss-up between science, which I loved, but I ended up doing science writing, so almost, um, uh, music, which I loved, and now I've sung with, uh, you know, top-level choirs and also a lot of solo work. Um, art, yeah, for a while I was an editorial cartoonist. I wasn't a very good one, but I was one. And... Uh, Acting, acting well, well I've, I've done, done some of that, that. so and, and then, then but writing, writing was finally the thing that I, I kind of kind of settled on but all of those things were things I've been interested in since I was a kid and I've managed to find ways to to do all of them over the course of my life I'm I'm not a kid anymore <laughs> <laughs> so every dream that you had so you make it come true right in some fashion I mean it would sure be nice if there was more money attached to some of that other than that Oh, and I, and I do a podcast, too. So, you know, there you go. That's very good. That's very good. Uh, so, to be a writer, is it difficult to become a writer in one sense? It's difficult in that it is a, it is a process. A lot of people want to be writers. Usually we start as readers. And my whole podcast is talking to other writers. And almost every one of them will say, oh, I was... You know, I loved to read as a kid, and then I started writing my own stories. That's kind of the way it all gets started. But uh, it's a long way from those first stories before you're writing at a uh, uh, level where, uh, you know, we have readers and people will actually pay money to read your stories or to publish your stories. It's it's hard work. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a matter of, of absorbing other people's writing from your reading and seeing how people tell stories and how people put words together. You have, you have to absorb, absorb that. that. You, you have, have to be able, able to do that, that yourself. yourself. And ideally, ideally, at least in, when you're starting out, out, every time you write something, it's better than the last thing you wrote. So, so it's, it's like, like any other, other, you know, if you're going to be an athlete, athlete or you're, you're going to be anything, anything it's a lot of practice, really. And eventually, if you're, you're fortunate, fortunate uh, you get to the point where you can do it at a very high level. So when did you write the first book? I wrote my first book when I was 14. 15 years old. In fact, I have it right here. Where is it? Here it is. Because uh, it was in a... Uh... I think we have a problem with the internet. There was no internet back then. <laughs> and, uh, most people would just sort of copy something, but I started writing, it's even dated on, uh, there it is, <laughs> on uh, September the 5th, 1973. So I would have just turned 14 that year. And uh, 
I just kept going. And so I got to the end of the semester and I kept writing. And that was my first book. Now it's a very short book, really. It seemed really long to me at 170 some handwritten pages, but it's actually a very short book. And I just kept going. I wrote four more books in high school and, um, but it was a long time before I had one published. That's a very different question. So was it difficult for you to publish the first book? Oh yeah. I mean, I started submitting um, when I was in my early twenties and it was 15 years of submitting before I ever got a book published. And, and my first publisher was a terrible publisher. I should never sign the, the contract with them, but I did. And that was my first book. But yeah. So there were 15 years there where I was sending out manuscripts. I had a dozen un, uh, unpublished novels, I think probably that I was sending out, maybe not quite that many. Um, and they would come back. And those were in the days when you had to send them out in boxes in paper form. It could take a long time for them to go and come back and they could sit at the editors for a while. So it could be two years sometimes after you sent out a manuscript when it would come back with the rejection. So it took a lot of, uh, well, gumption, we would have called it in the part of the States that I originally come from down in Texas. So a lot of gumption. <laughs> and, uh, now you say that the, the editors, it was, you know, it was very difficult uh, for them to do, I mean, let's say, the, the, for the writer to face the, edit, the editor is not easy, right? Because you are ready to get the rejection and say, no, try again, you know, it, it's good, it's nice, but, you know, and they always have a but, you know. <laughs> so now you started your own business on that, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, in, uh, in 2018, uh, I had a couple of things I wanted to put out myself. I had, I'd always wanted to put out a collection of my short fiction. Uh, and then I also had my grandfather-in-law's First World War Memoirs, uh, which he had written late in life. I've never, I never met him, but uh, we live in, this, is, this was their house that we're in right now. Um, and uh, so his memoirs were in the house, and I, I put them online to begin with, but I thought it'd be great to put them into book form. So I had that project, and so in that first year, and the thing is that it's now possible. Technology has advanced to the point where you can publish at a very high level, if you want to climb the, the learning curve, you can publish your work and get it out there in ebook and print. Uh, and so I decided to do that. And rather than just self-publish, because I did have this other project that was my grandfather-in-law's, I decided to set up a publishing company. My focus to begin with was mostly on stuff that I had that other publishers had orphaned because they'd gone out of business or whatever, and they'd come back to me. But I always had in the back of my mind, it'd be nice to publish other people. And so I started with uh, this anthology that I kick-started two years ago. Just as the pandemic was starting, March 2020, I had a Kickstarter uh, for Shapers of Worlds, which featured first-year guests on my podcast, science fiction and fantasy writers, many of them big best-selling names, international bestsellers, that level of writer. That worked, so I did it again last year. I'm doing it again now. And so those are kind of my beginning of publishing other people's work. And now this year, I've got uh, two reprints from other, other authors that I'll be publishing and two brand new novels never been pub published before that I'll be bringing out through Shadowclaw Press, my publishing company. So I'm sort of gradually gearing up to being a, the kind of publishing company I used to submit to. Now I'm on the other side of it. <laughs> Which is the easiest side, the writing or in the publishing? Uh, that's an interesting question. The, the publishing side takes more work than just sitting and writing. In, in some, some ways, ways, or at, at least it takes a, a wider variety of work because I'm, I'm making grant applications and I'm, you know, getting cover artists and I'm doing the editing myself right now of the stuff that I'm working on and the copy editing and the proofreading. That's all me. Uh, Shadowpaw Press is me. It's named after our cat, but he's no help at all. So it's just, just me doing everything. And when you're a writer, it's, it's nice. And my main publisher is a New York publisher that I just submit stuff to and they publish it right so i'm used to that too where i just write and then i send it in and then all this stuff that i'm doing now as a publisher is taken care of by somebody else so in some ways i think writing is easier than publishing okay uh, so you have to you have to give us uh, your address so people who have uh, hardship to publish their books so they can come to you 
so you're a bit more softer. <laughs> I'm not open to uh, I'm not, not open, open to submissions, submissions just yet. yet. <laughs> but, uh, the, the press is at shadowpodpress.com, and if uh, people want to check it out, at some point I will open in some fashion mm-hmm. to submissions. I am actually looking right now at. I have, I have two, two imprints. imprints. There's the Premiere, Premier, which, which is, is what the new stuff comes out under, and I've got one called Shadow Pop Press for Prees. You can see my musical <laughs> <laughs> angle right there, um, um, which, which is, is rights reverted novels that have been that authors, authors have that the rights have come, have come back to them because the publisher, the original publisher, has gone out of business or whatever, and they would like to bring them out in some fashion. So I've, I've got a couple of those coming up. Uh, so I am looking at those right now. On the the original original side, side, I want want to get get these these first two out and see, you know, know, just if I can can do this without without going completely broke with my first two books. (laughs) It's kind of what I'm looking at. And uh, if they work, if they work, and it looks like I can keep this going, then I will open up to submissions at some point. Yeah, as we as we say now, it's like everything in the end of the day is like it's about the bill, you know. So if there was no bill. Uh, in all these, uh, in all these uh, hats that you have, so what what would be the the best hat for you? They would choose writer. If I had my absolute, absolute choice, choice, I would do nothing, nothing but write fiction, fiction. Science, science fiction and fantasy. That would be my mm-hmm. my uh, one, one thing, thing. Uh, if, if I, I had, had to choose. choose. But, but I, I also, also like, like doing, doing a lot of different things. things. So, so even though it's a lot of work, I. I'm, I'm glad, glad I don't I have, have to choose, choose and that I have, have the, the opportunity, opportunity to spread out and do a lot of different things. Do you think that it would be boring just to do that one for you? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I think, think if, if I was just, just if right. literally, you know, like said, this, this is, is all you can, can do and you can't do, do any theater on the side, side and you can't. Well, actually, you know, now that I think, I think about it, if I actually had to choose, I might choose theater over writing. It's more fun performing than writing. Uh, so you change just in the harder time. to make money out. So. <laughs> so you change your mind just in three minutes, okay? If we keep talking, maybe you'll go to another one, right? <laughs> I know. And if I yeah, yeah I thought about it some more. Music, you know, being a, a little <laughs> opera, I could see doing that, you know. So yeah. I like it all. Mm. So what about broadcast, your uh, your broadcasting? Uh, well, well the, the podcast, podcast is fun. I've, I've over, over the years, the years uh, I've, I've done, done some, some radio and TV hosting. So that kind of came naturally to me. And uh, it was kind of tied in at the time uh, to uh, a series I was starting with Dog Books, which was called World Shaper. That's why the, it's a World Shaper series. There are three books in that series. And uh, that's why the podcast is called The World Shapers. It all kind of tied together that way. Uh, but I thought about it for a long time because I, I do have experience interviewing people, uh, first as a newspaper guy and then doing radio and television and uh, so i thought well again it's possible now podcasts are possible now uh, where at one point it would have been ridiculous to think that you could do something like this yourself uh, and so i decided to give it a shot and i really enjoy talking i've always enjoyed talking to other writers about how they write about the process of writing and i knew some authors because i'd been in the field long enough that i'd met some big names that i could have on as my early guests so, so I had, I had you know, know, quite major, major writers, writers came on right away and, and, and continue to come on. Um, and, and so, so that, that made it all seem very possible. And I just passed episode, episode 104. 104. I only do them every two weeks. Um, and they're there an hour long. They do take, you know, some time. And then you have to edit them a little bit and put them out there. So uh, every two weeks. And I just passed 104. And in my fourth year now. And, and that's, that's why there are now three anthologies, anthologies because each, each one features guests from one year of the podcast. That's very good. Very good. So, uh, tell us a little bit about what is your, how say, uh, I cannot say your goal, but what is your ideal in your life? You know, what is something that you pursue in your life? I think I'm just always trying to create something and put something into the world that wasn't there before. Uh, I mean, the best thing I created was my daughter, so there's that. She's, <laughs> uh, but uh, when it comes to the things that I do myself, uh, I think that's it. I, I've, always, I've always felt this urge to create things and to make things new. Uh, 
I did mention I was a minor. I minored in art in university as well. So that was another potential path that I might have gone down. Uh, and it's just, it's just that idea that, you know, whenever I'm gone, something that I created is still going to be around in some fashion. And uh, I just like the, uh, the thought of having created something new that wasn't there before and that has maybe contributed to the world in, in some fashion. Hopefully in a positive way. So that would be very good to, to have you also in other shows. I mean, in other in other discussions, because that's what we do. We we make tete a tete, as you, as you like to say that, and also in uh, two or three other people. But we'll wait for that. Uh, can you tell me a little bit your opinion about what is going on there in Canada at the moment, you know, with uh, COVID and all these restrictions, if you... Like yeah, to... well, I, 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 don't I don't have a very, very high opinion, opinion of our prime minister, but <laughs> um, we've we've gotten through all right. I mean, the the pandemic hasn't because of what I do, uh, the pandemic has not had the impact on me. It might in some, you know, I work at home anyway. Is what I'm trying to say. So the restrictions, which are are mostly lifted now here in Saskatchewan, the mask mandates are gone and the vaccine uh, um, passport is gone. So things are getting pretty much back to normal uh, here in Saskatchewan. Uh, I don't know. I think that I think the whole thing was mishandled badly all over the world, and I think it's been mishandled in Saskatchewan and in Canada too. Um, so on that side, you know, but in 2020, you know, in 2020 hindsight, you always look back and think, well, why didn't we do things this way? But at the time, people are just reacting and, and getting on with things. And that's largely human history, right? You're reacting to the next thing. And it's only way down the road that you're able to look back and say, oh, we really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and then as far as the uh, the Freedom Convoy, if that's what you're asking about. That, uh, yeah, I, I watched that with interest. There were... Uh, one, One of the, of the things, things I do is live stream walks, walks around Regina. I have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and I just go out and walk around the, the city with a gimbal, and I, you know, point my camera at things as I'm walking. and get my exercise, and I talk about it. And there were a lot of uh, walkers in Ottawa who were out there while the convoy was there. And you're looking at it; just looked like a big party. And I think the the hyperbole as to this being some sort of huge threat to the country. Because these protesters camped out in Ottawa for a while, I thought was considerably over the top. And then I think it was not very fair to the uh, the people involved in the protest. I didn't know anybody directly who was. Um, I certainly knew some people who probably supported it. And I thought that they were mis... I think that they were misjudged to a large extent by the media and the establishment of the country. And uh, there is that always that divide between, I don't know what it is in your country, but here it's between back east, the, you know, Ottawa, Toronto, and then out here in the west, things are different. And uh, I think there is some of that going on as well. It's like uh, the people in that part of the world didn't really like it when the people from this part of the country came over and made their voices known in such a loud and honking fashion. <laughs> Let's say a kind of a division in one sense, yeah. And, and poli it's, political stuff mostly, you know, I think so, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I think yeah, that, I think that division, division is probably similar, similar everywhere. everywhere. There's, there's kind of the elites, elites and then there's, and then there's the ordinary, ordinary people, people. And there's, there's often a, a divide between those two. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while it comes out like that. And uh, then there's there seems to be uh, surprise <laughs> when that happens. I'm quite, I'm quite apolitical, apolitical myself. Uh, it partly comes with having been born in the States. So I was an American citizen, a landed immigrant up here and couldn't vote, which was helpful when I was a newspaper reporter. I could cover both sides of the political spectrum. And, uh, you know, I, I say, I, I can't vote. I'm just, I'm just impartial. I'm just covering this. Um, and uh, then, uh, so I've never, and I've never belonged to a political party and I voted for I think every possible political party, almost, not everyone, but <laughs> the main ones uh, at various times in various elections. So I kind of watch all this stuff and I have my opinions, but I don't. Yeah, yeah we don't want to. Okay, don't express I them. Too I yeah, yeah. We, we, we talk up to a certain level, so 
we don't go because personally i i think that when people speak about voting so in in my country nobody speaks about voting you know we say no more everybody has his own choice that's why we have the the box the ballot. We, we have the ballot. Ballot. everything it's hidden so that's why we have that so otherwise you'd be like okay write a piece of paper and send it everybody sees that it's not like that so we say i'll keep it for myself so you do your part i do my part okay <laughs> Now there are some. I also, I also like to around, you know. I also, also like to keep in the back of my mind that, you know, <laughs> however strongly I feel about something, and I think everybody should do this. However strongly you feel about something, always, always keep, keep that, that little, little possibility, possibility in the back of your mind that you could be wrong, and you know, just that little bit of give and take. I think is very important. Yeah, the the discussion. Okay, let's say that the discussion should be, let's say, mostly on on TVs, and you know. Just to be an open one, not a, not on one side as usually we've seen, you know, lately. Just mm -hmm. to be open there and let people think, and let them decide, you know, their themselves. It, it is. It was. Let's say. Let's say before a few years, it was. I mean, not a few years, a few decades. It was easier, you know. People can vote, and that's all. You listen what one party has, and listen to the other one. So you know that in the end of the end, in the end of the day, they they won't do one hundred percent what they say. So. At least you you know what they they articulate. Now the action is another story. Let's wait, <laughs> and that is what I I, I I I think it's bad about. Anyway, in my country, I've seen also people kill their brothers. You know because of that, it's horrible. But anyway, no. it's like, there are, it depends on the level of uh, of uh, mentality or whatever they have in their minds. You know. To, to reach that, uh, in that, to kill your brother because he he votes for Democrats or for the Republicans. <laughs> That's horrible. But anyway, <laughs> there are some people that go to the extremes. Anyway, so we don't do, we don't want to go deep on that because we say it's a deep uh, beep and you get dirty as well. <laughs> That's the old saying. Never, never. In polite conversation, you never talk about politics or religion. Those are the two things you're <laughs> supposed to be off, off limits. So, okay. So, I think uh, probably we'll meet you soon if you have time. So, I already have a few guys that they like to speak about the freedom and all this kind of stuff, especially in the latest uh, uh, years that we have had and what is going on in the world and what also what is going on, uh, what is happening. And what is going to happen? So uh, I'll be very interested to have you again. But before we go to that one, can you please uh, give any advice to people in this, those days? I mean, in these days that we are living. I think the one thing that I wish people would do is to think more critically about everything they hear and everything they see and to try to grasp both sides of discussions and arguments and try to give some, try to, as I said, try to give some thought to the possibility that maybe the other, pe other person that has, has a point. I think there's so much, um, just, you know, my way is the right way and anybody who disagrees with me is, they're not just wrong, they're evil. <laughs> this is the way people tend to, tend to look at it. And I think that's the, I think that's where the real divide comes from, is that kind of unwillingness to meet other people as, in seeing them first as just individual human beings that you could perhaps talk to and get along with and understand if you leave aside whatever your ideological differences are, we're all just human beings. We're all in the same species on the same planet trying to survive and hopefully make a better world. And a lot of, you know, as I said, I'm a science fiction writer and a lot of science fiction is about that very thing. There has been over the years that kind of, you know, uh, we're all we're all one, one species inhabiting this world. And uh, we need to find ways to get along better than we clearly do that's pretty 
straight, you know, pretty, pretty boring, boring and everyday advice, advice, but that's, that's my advice. advice. Let's all just try to get along. I guess that's what that boils down to. In any case, uh, there's, an, there's a saying that some, I don't remember who says that, but he says, he said that uh, the truth has to be repeated because the, the lies is at the door. You know, it's like we have to repeat. It doesn't matter. We said it many times. We have to repeat it because the lie is always at the door. You know, it's like you open the door, it gets in. So we have to be very <laughs> consistent on repeating was, the truth. You know, <laughs> I think it was Churchill that said that a lie makes it halfway around the world before the truth gets its boots on or something like that. <laughs> a similar idea. Yeah, it's similar. The, yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, Edward. Thank you very much for your time and for whatever you shared with us. And uh, we hope to see you soon.